Hello, Father Fish here. I have a question for you. What is the very best filter for your aquarium? The very best. Is it the most expensive you can buy? Is it the one that pumps the most, the greatest volume of water through the mm, densest of, of media? What is it? that makes a filter effective. Think about it. There really is only one thing. It captures particulate matter and it creates an environment that nitrifying bacteria can grow on in order to reduce ammonia. It also must provide a media for the breakdown of humus. Humus. Humus is vegetable matter. Plants dying, leaves that you put in the tank, anything that breaks down humus provides a foundation for the food web in your aquarium. So what is the food web? The food web is the chain of life, the web of life, if you will, that lives in your aquarium. Everything from fungus and bacteria through protozoan, all kinds of microfauna and microflora to tiny little insectivore kinds of creatures, insect kinds of creatures all the way up to little tiny fish, which then feed bigger fish. Now that's one part of the web. The other part is the plant life. Humus also, by it being broken down by the bacteria and the fungus, creates a life force and energy and nutrition for plants. So what does the filter need to do? It needs to do two things. It needs to create an environment in which microfauna can live. Those are microscopic animals. And it needs to create an environment in which microflora can live. Microscopic plant life. Life such as fungus, bacteria, now, those are not floral bacterias, but the fungus and the bacteria feed the floral material, the floral life, which then provides nutrition for plant life in the tank. So, does your filter do that? Does your filter provide a foundation for the development of nutrition for the microfauna and the microflora and then the small fish and the plants in your aquarium. If it does not, then it really is not functioning adequately. Now, there is one other matter that's important to discuss. And it's the role of a filter. Well, not exactly the filter, more that which makes the filter work which is whatever it is that's moving water, whether it's air or an impeller or some other means of moving water through the filter media, that device, whatever it is by moving water is creating what is required for CO2, O2 exchange to bring enough oxygen into the water in order for all of the life to be able to survive. That includes plant life. Plants absorb oxygen too. They create oxygen, but they also use oxygen. So if you don't have adequate oxygenation in your tank, nothing is going to do well. Well, that's perhaps the least important in some ways um, 
aspect of a filter because all filters move water. You may find, however, that of an air stone that makes very fine bubbles will be of great value to the vibrancy of your plants and fish. So you may want to consider adding an air stone to whatever other filtration you have. Let's get back to the media. There is one single media that is the most effective media of all in creating the opportunity for your aquarium to be genuinely balanced. It is sand. Sand. See the beach? What's happening on that beach? The waves are rolling in. They're, they're sinking into the sand and receding. The sand is filtering each of those waves. There are little animals living inside that sand. Microscopic life up to sand fleas, which are an inch or more long. There are also clams and other invertebrates living in that sand that feed on the nutrients that those waves are bringing in. So the sand is the media whereby the ocean is filtered. Now, if sand is adequate in the ocean, don't you honestly believe that sand can be effective in your aquarium as well? Well, what would it take to be able to do that? The father fish system is comprised of an inch of soil, two inches of sand, before water is put into the tank, an inch of soil, two inches of sand, and then carefully add the water so as not to disturb the sand layer. Fill it up, add whatever hardscape you want, and plant it heavily immediately. I like to use sponge filters at this stage because they provide some extra water movement. But frankly, a power head or an air stone are really just as effective because that sand is going to provide all of the filtration that is necessary to occur in your tank. It works by precipitation and by water flowing gently through it. Gravel is very different. In gravel, the water flows so very quickly and washes out, particularly in the top layers of the gravel, washes out whatever is trapped in there. So it creates an environment in which the water column is filled with nutrition. You really don't want that. You want to limit the nutrition in the water column. So the way to do that is to allow it to precipit precipitate out and allow for all of the animals and the life that's growing in that sand to be able to filter out the water, to filter the, the nu nutrients out of the water, as well as taking care of ammonia. Now, the plants do a really good job of that. The plants will take care of the ammonia. The sand will take care of the precipitative nutrients that remain in your tank. Nutrients that are created by primarily by overfeeding. So what this system does, it creates a web whereby the small fish that are in the tank will be able to forage and find the food they need in order to be able to survive. So here's the challenge. Set up a tank like this, make it a small one, doesn't matter, any size. Put a few fish in it, guppies, maybe small little tetras, whatever, some small fish, 
and a few, not a lot, loaded up with plants, at least 75% planted, and then do not feed it. From day one, do not feed it. Now, if you add to that what we're calling a resurrection environment, which is nothing more than humus leaf mold from a living environment, from a creek or a stream or a lake or a pond, take some of that and put it in your tank and you will be seeding your tank with a food web. You will be giving it the opportunity to develop a diversity of life which will enrich and strengthen and stabilize the aquarium. Don't be afraid you're going to put something bad in. You've already got plenty of bad stuff in there already by virtue of the food you're putting in. Don't worry about that. What you need to do is put these leaves in there and create an environment in which life is going to be able to thrive to grow, to increase, to become the kind of environment that you find where? Well, down at the ocean. <laughs> Let's do this together. If you don't trust it, try something small. Now, I have supplements that we can add to your dirt if you want to do a really gang-busting job of it and create something that'll last for, well, forever, that'll last as long as you have the tank set up. But even if you don't do that, get a little potting soil or any other dirt you want. Make a mud pie out of it. Put one inch of it in your tank, in a small tank, a little less. Two inches of sand on top of that. Any sand will do, it doesn't matter. Any sand at all. And then put a plate or a towel or something in there so that when you put the water in, you're not going to stir that sand up. Plant it. Put a few fish in it. Put a little air stone in it or a sponge filter and sit back and watch and see what happens. You will be amazed at how effective, how full of life, how vigorous, how dynamic your aquarium has become. It will, I promise you, become your favorite aquarium. Sand. Sand is the key. Sand is the key.